think we should make a start. And um, I just want to start with an apology because my broadband is very dodgy today. And so um, Carol, is, I've already frozen twice since we've been waiting and Carol is standing by to, to take over and he's going to lead the discussion at the end because it's just not reliable. So I just want to start by welcoming you all and particularly Rodrigo, um, who's going to talk to us today uh, about, um, well, you can see it up on your screen, visual tools, uh, the way of managing crises and emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> Have I gone already? Yeah, just, just, <laughs> you do it. You, you take you take over. But <laughs> yeah, I told you. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I'll, I'll take over. Uh, first of all, absolutely, everybody, welcome to uh, to this conversation. Uh, the planning is to to let uh, Rodrigo speak for about 15, 15 to twenty minutes. And after that, we have some questions. Diago in Chile, South America. He's an associate professor at the School of Design at the Catholic University of Chile and a researcher at the Chilean National Research Center for Integrated Disaster Management. And most interesting for this conversation, he's been involved with the Guillermil project, which is a development of icons for to communicate disasters and uh, risk emergency. So, sorry, to communicate risk, the disaster risks and emergencies. Mm -hmm. And the main aim was to make, to provoke discussions and make this information accessible and understandable and inclusive. Um, I've followed the project for a few years now and it's absolutely fascinating. Um, please put the questions in the chat, uh, mute your microphones and enjoy the talk. Rodrigo, please start. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Rob, for the invitation and uh, every uh, welcome everybody to this uh, talk uh, that i'm uh, uh, giving today to the, this cycle of triple uh, conversations for me it's an, it's an honor to to be here uh well as uh, Karel mentioned today we will have this conversation about emergencies and information uh there is a there is a change of uh, paradigm here from uh, the reactive uh, approach to towards uh, the management of risk and here information is really important uh one case uh, that i developed uh, six uh, seven years ago is the gamil icons uh, project i will develop uh, in deep uh, it's a double project, research and, and development, designing the icons, but also testing. And then we will uh, discuss, I will show, I, I expect that uh, we can discuss about the applications and there is an invitation to collaborate uh, also for you today. As uh, Karel mentioned, uh, my name is Rodrigo Ramirez. I am associate uh, professor at the UC Chile School of Design, the Universidad the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. I, uh, I am also a researcher of the National Research Center for Integrated uh, Disaster Management, the CIGIDEM. Uh, um, going into the, the, the presentation, the conversation, uh, this relationship between emergency and information, um, you know that uh, an important part of uh, everyday life is interacting with, the, uh, with information. And among them, uh, the visual representations. We can see the, these uh, manifestations everywhere in uh, digital, but also in the landscape. Uh, uh, there are part of our everyday life. Uh, however, this normal interaction is uh, altered in, during an, an emergency. And the experience of emergency constitutes a complex, complex experience uh, and also with large information needs. At the right of this slide, you can see a part of the um, evacuation for tsunami education campaign from the national uh, office, the national agency for emergency management in Chile. They use extens extensively uh, this kind of representations infographics with uh, symbols and labels with, with instructions expecting to be comprehended during an emergency. And you're, you're putting in, in trouble probably your users because this, is, this, information, this information, sorry, is probably designed uh, to be uh, comprehended in a hard moment, in a, in a complex moment. 
Uh, the approach from uh, the information design, uh, the principle, their principles of uh, information designs are able to, to be integrated into emergency scenarios. Uh, with my uh, teamwork here in Santiago, we have developed this uh, kind of conceptual model of uh, three steps. And the first step, what is visualized, uh, the, inf the visual information needs to be seen, needs to be visualized, then uh, need to be comprehended, mm, understanding the, the, the things that you are, that you are seeing. Uh, and the third step is uh, applying that information. What uh, decisions you take, uh, what activates, uh, as the question mentioned here. So information design can make a difference in these three, three steps visualizing, understanding, and enhancing the communication for this uh, approach, uh, multidisciplinary approach called the disaster risk reduction. Uh, in the disaster risk reduction, I have uh, developed this uh, conceptual model also dividing the experience of emergency in, in three different uh, moments. One is before an event. The other one is uh, during an event, and the third uh, step, uh, the, third, the third stage is after an event of, an emer of emergency. Uh, probably um, before an event is the best opportunity to manage the risk, uh, preparing information to identify, to know the procedures, Uh, it's the worst moment to present new information. You, you must to prepare that information for rapid actions, to take decisions, to report uh, in, in, in a, in a uh, agile uh, way uh, about your status. And then uh, when, when you try to recover, you never know when you will finally be completely recovered. So it's important probably to use the information to assemble it, to articulate. Uh, we can design the information for three different moments. It's not just the signage for emergencies, not just the symbols to be displayed uh, or spread uh, at any time. It's important to differentiate these three steps. And probably one of the most uh, known manifestations uh, of uh, visual information for emergencies is uh, the visuals, the elements uh, containing symbols, signs, uh, again, uh, information boards or communication boards, infographics, today probably animation or interactive uh, pieces. Uh, these are widely applied to display opportune information, for example, for warning, uh, but usually these are, these are not uh, measured. So, so here is an opportunity to integrate the whole experience with visual information to improve this emergency management. And here is the project, this is the proposal, these are the GEMIL or GEMIL icons for emergencies. This is a set of uh, 85, more or less 86 uh, symbols uh, for uh, managing uh, emer emergencies before, during, and after. Uh, this is an open source initiative uh, with a focus on making the discussion about disaster risk reduction and emergency more accessible and inclusive also. You can pre-assume that symbols will be probably more universal, more comprehensive. Uh, so we started with this ingenuity to uh, displaying everything in symbols, probably people will understand faster. And we discovered uh, at the beginning, at the very beginning of the project, uh, a, a very good opportunity to test that, to, to evaluate uh, how people are, are seeing, understanding, and applying this kind of uh, elements. So uh, it's a set of symbols with open access, av available in multiple formats, and icon, icons, sorry, are always be improved by, by testing. I will explain that now this uh, element. 
So beyond the visual design, beyond the, 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 the graphic uh, design that we are really passionate about that, but uh, as I mentioned, we discovered this uh, very good opportunity, um, uh, seeing how people can create their own interpretations, how sometimes variables like uh, geography, language, uh, cultural familiarization, or, or uh, if you are familiarized, for example, with uh, earthquake scenarios, probably you will recognize a kind of imaginary of, uh, of that uh, element. So we decided, uh, as I mentioned before, at the very beginning of the project to, to create this parallel project, uh, testing permanently uh, all the, 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 the different icons in, in the set. Uh, we use uh, usually two methods, uh, two uh, different uh, test uh, the options. One is the preferences test uh, is uh, mentioned in the usability literature. Uh, for example, uh, asking in, in, in both uh, testings, we ask simple questions. Like for example, in this case, which of uh, at the left, sorry, in the preferences test, which of these icons does represent the idea? In this case, evacuation way. And you just uh, put your preference. At the right, uh, you can uh, see the, 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 this is the, 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 the test that, that, that we can, we have applied more during the project. And the question here is what does this icon represent? So you obtain here an open response. Um, I will explain this uh, uh, in detail uh, now. Uh, we have based uh, in, uh, in bi bibliographic uh, references, uh, for example, Brugger, uh, uh, Frascara, set of symbols and she had proposed some testing uh, processes or methods that we have collected, we have reviewed and we have adapted to our own uh, project. All these test uh, methods are explained and developed in visible, visible language uh, journal. Uh, I, I will explain now in, in one minute uh, the one of these uh, methods, the meaning uh, method, uh, we collect the uh, from the representation, the icon, we collect the response. Uh, every icon, it has uh, uh, 200 uh, responses at that. Vigus incorrect, opposite or, or non-response uh, given. And then we define this uh, uh, visual, this donut uh, graphic to establish the performance. According with international uh, standards, for example, the ISO, uh, some other agencies, for example, the ANSI in the US, uh, have a, a higher standard, the 85%. This uh, means that the, in 10 people, if one and a half don't understand what the, what the, what the, the icon depicts, uh, probably you need to rethink, redesign, or retire that, that, uh, that icon. So in this case, uh, you can see from uh, 2021 uh, round, we, we, we developed different rounds. Uh, not, uh, we discovered that we, can't, uh, we cannot uh, uh, test uh, all the icons at the same time. So ha we have divided, we are now in the fifth round of uh, testing icons. And you can see here the, the round from 2021. Uh, this is, these are not uh, evaluated yet, but you can see in 214 responses, uh, which are the trends, which uh, are the, the, the most uh, uh, repeated associations in, in different uh, languages, uh, Spanish, English. In this case, uh, we collected some responses in Chinese, in Italian. Uh, so we can then have a, 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 a 
a deep uh, analysis uh, of the responses in order not just to collect the right uh, or the, 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 the right uh, classification, also to see sometimes uh, which uh, interpretations uh, people are suggesting, for example. Uh, we observe sometimes when uh, an, an a specific icons uh, have uh, a trend in uh, don't know, I, I cannot give a response. Uh, so this is a, a trend that probably people are not uh, recognizing the, the scenario, the danger, the eventual uh, uh, hazard. Uh, so these are uh, like uh, uh, indirect uh, uh, indicators that, that we collect. Uh, the, in the results we have, we, we can make, uh, and we also have used these uh, results to improve the design uh, of the icons. We return to the graphic design. Uh, you can see here a selection from, uh, from uh, the different versions. We have passed for, from 58% uh, to 44. In this case, we have some fails also. And not all the icons uh, reach the 83%. This is the other thing that you can recognize. Sometimes uh, you can have also variables uh, that affect the performance of, of that specific round. For example, uh, language, again, familiarization with the scenarios, the context. Uh, for example, one of the critics that uh, we ourselves, so we, we do in the project that we never have uh, tested these icons in a real uh, application, in a signage system or in, uh, in, a, in a space, uh, in a building, for example. We are working for that, but, uh, but uh, this is a, a thing that we have observed also that affects, obviously, the results of the testing. Uh, here is the last part. Uh, I'm, I'm taking uh, one or few more minutes to do, uh, showing you the applications. We are trying to go, I think, from four years ago to, until today, we are trying to, 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 to go beyond the design of uh, icons and testing of the icons. That is a, a very interesting part of the project, but we have started to think and design and, and, and project how we can use these elements as a tools to manage uh, Uh, in California, in China, of course, in Chile, uh, you will see some examples here. And then in, uh, uh, during the, pand the COVID uh, pandemics, we started to develop some uh, map there, cartographic map, and then you use these symbols in order to uh, facilitate the discussions from specific communities. In this case, a school in Cartagena, in a city in the coast here in Chile, where the, 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 the real users, the real uh, community from that school can discuss about the tsunami evacuation of, of their own school. Uh, so you, you can see here that the uh, icons, uh, it's not a matter of uh, how to design a better icon or how to design or discuss the interpretation, it's how the, these uh, information elements can help, can contribute to discuss about uh, emergency scenarios. Uh, uh, in the, 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 the visual information, the emergencies that, that make uh, made sense uh, for them. And at the right, you can see this one. This is one of the last uh, workshops that I, I, I could done in, in 2022 with a group of uh, students of the School of Design at University Australia in Valdivia, in the southern part of Chile, near Patagonia, where they are working in uh, climate emergencies as, uh, as a scenario with uh, this uh, element. Um, I, I probably extended more here, but just to show some examples 
doing these workshops also in, uh, in an online platform, in this case in Peru. I never have been uh, there in Lima, but uh, we can uh, drive this, uh, this uh, workshop with, uh, with the students at the Design School of uh, Católica de Peru. And at the right again, uh, with the students so from a primary school, they play with these elements. Literally, they play, but they also discuss and learn at their own uh, pace. Uh, this is a platform also to redefine applications. We have uh, make, uh, made collaboration with the Open Moji Group in Germany. We have developed some digital stickers uh, in order to vitalize these uh, elements of an emergency. And at the right, we have these info kits that is a kind of support uh, uh, specifically developed for, for, for scenarios. In this case, you can see the, the COVID uh, one. The, the interesting part here at the right is that the, the text translation is made by the, 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 the local communities. So you can have non uh, hegemonic uh, languages translated. For example, uh, signage information, visual information in uh, Totonaco from Mexico, in Guarani from Paraguay, in uh, Creole from Haiti, in Indi from, the, from India. So it's a really, uh, good opportunity to create new scenarios for collaboration in emergency scenarios. Uh, so finishing, this is an invitation to you to involve. Uh, this is a, an, an, in a sense, a collaborative project. We can explore multiple approaches. For example, we have cataloged the projects uh, in the School of Design here in Santiago in this site called Design for Resilience. Uh, I am part also of the design network for emergency management. Uh, we have uh, very good connections with the IIID, so probably we can explore in a bigger scale some uh, collaboration scenarios. And the last project that I want to, to tell you today is this platform Design for Emergency that we have started the uh, past year with the, with the faculty members uh, at the Notre Dame University in the US. We are creating a, a, a roundtable series during this year uh, to discuss about the role of design in, in general, information design, of course, in the emergency scenario. So this is an opportunity to keep the conversation uh, beyond the icons, beyond the testing, probably we can explore also some collaboration models. So many thanks for your time. I think I, I, I took 20 minutes. Uh, thank you, Carol. Thank you, Rob, again for this invitation. And thank you, of course, to the International Institute for Info Information Design. I'm open to, to your questions and, and comments. Uh, so I'm uh, 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 stopping the, the, the shares, the, the screen sharing now. Wonderful. Th thank you very much. We get a, normally a very loud round of applause here. Um, so, uh, absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much. Um, I've got I've got many questions, but it's I would like to ask other people to react first. Are there any questions that starts off the conversation? Uh, it, uh, I've, I've got many notes, but what I really liked to start with, um, you do you do three things that uh, are ex exemplary for, for information design projects. You, you design yourself, you test yourself, and you collaborate with all the, everybody around the globe, which is, I think, fairly unique. Uh, I, I wish any of the medical industries, any of the pharmaceutical industries would take this approach to start. Mm. I mean, we are still 20, 25 years behind your work. So that's that's a good compliment to start with. Um, um, your, your, your preconceived ideas and your your, your South American background. Um, how, how do you try to be neutral? Mm. Well, th thank you. It's a really interesting question, Carol. Uh, we have discovered some bias in in our research, of course. Uh, not uh, from myself. I, 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 
probably I, 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 I made the, the wrong sensation that I doing all the work. I work with a team, uh, students from the School of Design are really important to, to be involved every semester. Uh, there, there is a, another tip for my design school colleagues here. Uh, this project became really cool between students, among students. So it's a good chance also to, 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 to have a, a, a place uh, every semester to, to work with uh, very talented, talented uh, uh, students. So to respond to your, your question, we have discovered some bias, uh, for example, cultural bias. Uh, here in South America, in Chile, in the Pacific coast, we have some familiarization specifically with uh, earthquakes, tsunamis uh, scenarios. So this uh, probably affects the performance of uh, some of the results. Uh, the other bias that we have discovered that uh, if, if we are in a context of uh, college or university students, our responses are uh, more oriented uh, between uh, 17, 18, 19 to maybe 20 something years. And it has been really difficult to equilibrate, for example, with the elderly people. Uh, we have uh, practically not uh, responses from people uh, from uh, 75 years uh, and, 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 and more. Uh, and this is, are the kind of things that we have uh, we are thinking to design a specific, uh, for example, testing platform uh, to collect responses from uh, elderly people, for example. Um, and I think these are, are the, the most uh, remarkable uh, bias that we have uh, detected. Um, the language, of course, the language uh, sometimes uh, uh, can, can make a uh, uh, you, but but these are the kind of uh, fine tuning variables that you get, get can detect in the in the testing process. Wonderful, wonderful. thanks, thanks, uh, thanks so much for the answers. It's, it is very nice to know. Um, you, you mentioned um, I've just if there are no que other questions, please interrupt immediately. Uh, anybody else can. Um, you mentioned that there are three steps in the. Are important. You have to got to see the symbol or the icon. You got to comprehend it, and you got to active uh, apply it and act on it. Um, to, to give an example from our own experience, the, the falling rock um, traffic sign on, on either a slow down to make sure that I don't that I have got enough time to react when I see rocks falling, or I can speed up to get to pass the dangerous area as quickly as possible. So, so I, I would really like the idea of having three steps of mm -hmm. under, seeing the visual, understanding it, and applying it. But in your testing, the preference test doesn't address that at all. But the mm -hmm. meaning test, you only ask one question, what does it mean? So I think you skip there. Uh, the seeing part, mm -hmm. people are behind their computers anyway, so they, they yeah. look at your symbol. But I would probably ask a question: um, What what is drawn here? What, what what do you see? And then the second question is: What does it mean? And then the third question would become: What would you do? W yeah. Would that help? Would, would that or the other way around? Um, <laughs> why don't you ask? <laughs> Yeah, well, well I, I mentioned during my presentation the work from Nora Olige in, in, a, in, a triple, in the triple ID. She developed, uh, uh, yes, the, that, that standard. You're, you're, you're showing that. Uh, that uh, in, in, the, in, the back is, in the back it's called Let's Seek. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody recognizes that? <anything? laughs> a floppy disk. Uh, yeah, it's, it's from 2003. And The second or third question, I don't remember well, uh, where uh, she the, the test asks about how do you do with this information. Yeah. So uh, I am thankful for, for your suggestion because uh, this is the kind of things that we are not uh, uh, affording yet. We are not uh, working on that uh, yet. So w of course we can we can do it. Uh, for for example, evaluating some specific symbols for evacuation, for example. 
uh, th th this is a, 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 a this is a very good uh, field of uh, research. The, the, specifically, the evacuation uh, signs or evacuation information. And th that leads again to another question. You, you, all <laughs> the tests you do, of course, are on computer screens, and I'm in yeah. a very very comfortable room with a nice chair and I've got a coffee next to me and I fill in your um, your questionnaire yeah. and I've, I've got issues and all sorts of uh, visual issues and comprehending issues but I, I, whatever I want to do I, I'm not going to activate I'm not going to act on any of your symbols while, while I'm sitting behind my computer yeah um, it, are you confident enough that your symbols really work in an emergency situation yeah uh, I mean, I can't, <laughs> you can't just say, okay, we have tsunami tomorrow morning at nine. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you, you have made a, a, a very good point there. I recognize uh, from uh, all the, the time that uh, we're working in this project that we have a lack of context, uh, not uh, apply it or not evaluate it in in a, in a real emergency situation. That is uh, probably you can imagine the difficulties to to do that. But uh, yeah, this is this is also an opportunity to make a very interesting project. Probably this is the platform that we can discuss this kind of things. Uh, why not? To evaluate, I was uh, think for, for for example, and I, I am working on that with a colleague uh, in a platform like a video game, for example, where you pass through ah, uh, yes. a specific situations and you made mistakes, you lost your life, or but this it is a game. So so uh, I think it's the kind of of uh, hybrid uh, scenarios where you can probably go into a context. But I recognize totally that. Uh, in the work that I presented today, there is a total lack of uh, context. The, the video game is absolutely, it's, it's a fascinating example. It, it, it's, I'm gonna use that if you don't mind. I've, I did some testing in uh, in Dubai with uh, medical devices, uh, with a um, AID, an automatic electronic uh, defibrillator. Um, we're not allowed to test anywhere else but in Dubai because they have got very lean, uh, and we, we tested with military, with uh, firemen, uh, and with nurses and police, mm -hmm. police people who can all be imagine what it is to live under stress and in stressful situations. Um, of course, they kept laughing, but it, it, they know what it is like to be in stress, in stressful situations, and react yeah. very quickly. Uh, video game is actually a very good alternative for that. It's, it's, it might be worth uh, worth looking into that. Uh, Rob, thank you, me. thank you, Gary, for your comments and, and questions. So really interesting. Please, please, anybody else, barge in, because I, I think um, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, I only may add that I first have uh, seen uh, your project in I can say how beautiful this project emerged. <laughs> uh, that's the one part. And the other one is I, I highly respect and appreciate that the number of symbols is still quite low. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's very efficient and very precise because, you know, in, in six years, it could, it could grow to millions. Yeah. Yeah. And in that case, it, 86 is a, is a magic number. Maybe 87, <laughs> maybe 85, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, this is quite remarkable that Uh, yes, as, as uh, I always remember and mention uh, a conversation that we had in Mexico in 2018, we were starting at the, the project, uh, how to uh, put the value not uh, in the design of the icons, uh, just in the design. So it, it probably the value is in the research that we can collect a lot of responses, but also in the impact that we can create with the communities. So the work that we are doing, for example, with the 
with the design network for emergency management have been also a very good way to to share different uh, approaches to the to the emergency management with the techniques or methods that for designers are really natural so thank you for that and the other um, thing which come up to my mind is um, i think you you sure will be uh, familiar with the communication boards in japan yeah. Uh, all of those uh, KG presented several times. Is yeah. there any already an interconnection uh, links between these two concepts? Yeah, well, I, I probably passed uh, very fast uh, across the different uh, examples, but uh, in the InfoKids uh, example, that this, this one that, was that is translated by communities, uh, mm -hmm. we inspired uh, a lot in, in communication boards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anu, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, hi. Um, um, your presentation was very interesting for me. Um, one of the points struck a chord because uh, um, I was there during the tsunami, Asian tsunami in, in 2000. Too, I think. Uh, and a lot of communities that stay close to the ocean in India um, are illiterate and uh, they are mostly from local village, I mean, along the coast, I meant. They are local fishermen and they don't, re uh, they have some, uh, in India it's not so organized, so they, would, they wouldn't have ever encountered icons, for example, or can read even if it's in the local language, they might not even know how to read um, in the local language. So I was just wondering if you have tested also, uh, it doesn't matter if it's in India, but I was just wondering if a uh, lower strata you know, of education, have you ever tested people commun in communities like that as part of your testing? <laughs> Well, thank you, Anuradha, uh, for, for your co question. Uh, effectively, we have uh, tested this in, in, in uh, less educated communities. Uh, we have a characterization about that, but uh, not, not specifically in, in India. So I always looking for opportunities. Uh, in this case, probably we can contact a specific test. Uh, we have refined the method. I, I haven't mentioned that uh, in the presentation, but we have refined the method so we can personalize now some of the testing. Uh, and, and of course, being an open source project, if you sometime need to, to adapt for your own uh, context or cultural or language uh, um, practices, uh, please just uh, drop me an, an email and we can find a way to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I follow up with another question based on that? The, I, oh, sorry, uh, Chiara, would you like to go first? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no problem. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Congratulations for your work. I have this question. If you discover that an icon is interpreted differently uh, by people from different countries, cultures, uh, what do you do? What's your choice at the end? Thank you, Kiara, for, for, your, for your question. Uh, in this case, we have different, uh, different uh, approaches. Uh, for example, th there are some details. Uh, if you follow the ISO protocol, uh, for example, the one fascinating one is uh, if you have more than 5% of uh, opposite uh, responses, you have to retire immediately that icon because some, someone can be in danger because you're interpreting the opposite. Uh, that, uh, for example, they, they mentioned that uh, sometime they discovered that in some signature uh, uh, for evacuation in, uh, in, I don't remember exactly where, but uh, in cultures that read from right to left. Uh, you invert the direction of, of reading and you, you can have some, some problems there. That is an, a fascinating topic to investigate. Uh, show it again very fast, uh, show that, that uh, when we repeat the test in a different context, we get got some different uh, results uh, and more
also retired the icon, not, not, uh, not uh, for, for example, we started the, the project, uh, the version, the, the first uh, version uh, had uh, many different uh, actors, like uh, children, uh, boy, girl, uh, man, So in symbol group, we have discussed this, this uh, topic also at some point uh, uh, about the, what happened when you represent, when you depict uh, gender roles or gender genders doing some things. Uh, for example, in uh, symbols, uh, when you put a woman and a, a Is, is it distorting the performance? So, so we have uh, different approaches uh, <laughs> to respond to that and, and, and uh, redesign or repeat the, the testing or uh, retire the, the icon. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, the, um, it, it, the, the remark by Anu was is, I found it fascinating. I, I work a lot with uh, patients who are um, with a, with a absolutely wrong word health illiterate. Um, I, I'm, I'm I've got a poor health literacy. I, I know that of course one, one liver and two kidneys, but that's as far as it goes. Um, but with less educated people who are poorly literate who struggle to read, um, images are seen as a, a simple solution or the main solution actually, because they can't read, so therefore they must use images. Um, it comes back to Rob's question as well about are there general guidelines for symbol designers, but what uh, you showed as well is, is, I think in the tests, you do not have accompanying texts with images. So you... Texts are translated into languages that are not uh, not very common. The Creole and, and um, yeah. Hawaii mentioned. Yeah. Um, in general, would you suggest to use texts right next to an image, or would you do? You, do you think it's still possible to have? It's a biased question already. Do you think it's still possible to have pictograms or symbols without question without text? Yeah. Yeah, you, you make here again a, a, a very good point because uh, we have this heritage from rational school uh, about the, the infallibility of uh, symbols mm -hmm. and symbols don't need or can, can come to replace the texts. But today the user experience in digital platforms or the usability have uh, shown that uh, you need uh, labels. You need uh, to put different uh, representations, visual and textual. Uh, uh, and we have learned also that uh, we repeat the testing in rationalistic way, uh, trying to, 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 to identify the interpretation if people are, are depicting or are in interpreting uh, from the image. But in the InfoKit uh, project, that's, that's the, the project you mentioned, Karel, uh, the labeling is fundamental, uh, specifically when you translate that uh, labeling in, into your natural language. We have discovered it. Uh, it's, it's early to, today because th th this is a, a junk project, but uh, we have discovered that people become really involved uh, when, when, because they are not uh, accustomed to, to hypothesize, hypothesize uh, that maybe uh, when you have migrant communities uh, that are reluctant in, in Austria uh, from Bureau, uh, maybe Martin re re remember that uh, 
uh, th there is a pro project from for from Syrian or Arab migrants that uh, came. Yes. Uh, it is uh, Erwin Bauer, and it was yeah. um, pictograms uh, for all the people uh, coming to Austria looking for shelter and refugees, and uh, quite successful. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and and this is a good example of how you create this engagement. Uh, for, for, from uh, from people uh, foreign or, or strange uh, that uh, are are trying to insert to to integrate into a cultural uh, space, if you just translate uh, the labeling into their their text, probably you are creating conditions for 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 their seeing comprehension and, and acting. I think it's absolutely Kiara's work, but I, I think it's a matter of uh, you show trust and care. And if you if you show that you care by interpreting or translating text in, in people's language, uh, also making text simpler to understand, mm -hmm. um, you show that you care, and therefore people trust information more. Um, if information is not designed or not not thick, I mean, every any package leaflet shows that the industry doesn't care about patients. Yeah, and patients see that immediately. And then if you have well-designed symbols or and they have a, a text in a local language or in the language of the people who actually addressed that shows care and therefore, therefore it's trusted. Um, I wish there was a little bit more research on that, but I'm afraid I can't yeah. refer to anything. <laughs> we need to do that. Of course. Um, any other questions? Are there, Sue? Um. It's, it's, it's really about the cultural side of this. And do you feel, Rodrigo, that, you, that you've established a, a figure, the way you draw a figure that works for all cultures? Or do you feel that any, any, a, a particular culture might, might feel that's not for me, um, that's for someone else? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 this you know are you communicating I think uh, again we have discovered that uh, pictograms symbols icons are not the infallible they're always uh, uh, tied to interpretations and, and people from different uh, backgrounds, cultural or linguistic backgrounds will interpret in different ways. Do you know that the only icon that we reach 99% uh, in the test was wash your hands in, uh, during the COVID uh, uh, pandemics? Probably because everyone literally was connected with that and, and, and the representation is completely iconic. Two hands uh, behind the, 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 the water tap. So 99%. Uh, what happened with that 1% uh, of uh, different interpretation? I, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, but uh, it's really difficult to, to create that. And, and just to mention, I remember the work from Martin Krampen and, and Otto Leicher uh, they, for, for example, uh, stated that the, the arrow uh, was the infallible sign, the, 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 probably the perfect uh, icon, because uh, uh, everyone can recognize the direction and not the, 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 the arm, the, 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 the literal element. Uh, but we... My my response today to your question. Thank thank you, Sue. <laughs> and, and, sorry, I have another quick question. Um, three three stages of icon: uh, the, the 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 warning, the it's happening, and the the run or get out of it, whatever. Um, how how do they work together? Is, is is could it be electronic so that it changes? From one to the other, or I, I'm just really intrigued as to how these symbols will appear in the environment. 
Yeah, well, you, here you have probably the work of uh, information design teams uh, trying to define what are the platforms or which uh, uh, parts of the information will be contained at, uh, at what moment. Today, for example, in, in service design, uh, there is a, a way to call that is a, a, a point, a contact point, uh, the contact point uh, at, the, at the experience. Uh, 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 yeah, and it's, it, it's the same. Uh, we we are we are also proposing that this can be in your mobile phone, for example, can be a, a, a WhatsApp sticker that you can send it uh, very fastly to your colleagues, to your 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 family. I don't know. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you. A long email after this. <laughs> <laughs> the main question that I'd like to ask you right now is what about operalization of the icons? Because you know you have a beautiful set of tested icons there. What is the next step to getting them actually into public life? And mm -hmm. to what extent has that maybe already been done that I'm not yet aware of? Yeah, well, th thank you. Uh, want to mention that uh, Saskia and I and a team, uh, we are part of the Design Network for Emergency Management. So I'm really, really happy to, to, to have you here, Saskia, today. And to answer your question, um, the, the, the efforts, the, the, the work that we are putting now is not uh, anymore into more icons or, or creating or, or re refining the language, maybe from the, the testing. But more, the work is, is more put into how to involve communities, how to create uh, meaningful pieces of information more than new symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's a way also to, to, to respond to your question uh, from the, the presentation also. So that's uh, why I, I spent uh, at the end uh, a, a specific uh, uh, moment to tell you about the workshops, for example, uh, to tell you about the, the, these uh, experimental platforms uh, that are based in uh, communication boards. Uh, uh, by the way, communication boards uh, from Japan, you know that today they, these are an ISO, an ISO standard. Uh, probably we can also explore that, uh, how to create uh, new standard uh, supports uh, for international communication. I don't know, uh, the, 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 the work that uh, we are conducting now is how to involve communities. I think this is the, 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 the good, uh, good uh, response uh, at this case. Um, and creating these uh, collaborative networks. I, I really think that that's absolutely fundamental for design in general is to create communities and to get in touch with people you work for. And that is one of the things I try to teach in Lutzern, but it's increasingly difficult because the curricula of design studies and many other studies are, are basically preventing to get in contact with people outside the university. And I'm really struggling to make sure that students are aware design students, that it is absolutely essential to get in contact, talk to people um, you work for, you work with. Uh, Anu's remark about South India um, shows that it's absolutely essential to, to, and in my view, talk to patients always. That really helps. Um, we've got about a few minutes left. Um, in the first place, I would really like to thank you. If there are any other questions, um, there will be, of course, hopefully a continuing um, discussion on the whatever boards we can find and talk to each other through different uh, channels. Um, Rob, would you like to close? Been on and off during the whole talk, which was absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much, uh, Rodrigo. Um,
all the comments were great as well. Working together, working with users, cooperation, brilliant. So just to say thanks everybody for coming. Thank you, Rodrigo, for contributing such a great uh, talk to our series of Triple ID conversations. Um, they will be going online um, into a YouTube channel quite quite soon. Cool. So we're building a great resource here for information design practitioners and, uh, and educators and students and so forth. Mm -hmm. as well. So that's, I think, uh, oh yeah, just to say the next one, 2nd of February is Maxwell Roberts, who's talking about that old favorite, the London tube map, because it's the 90th anniversary of the tube map um, right. this, this year, in fact, this month. Um, and uh, then on 2nd of March, uh, Stefania Passera from Helsinki is going to be introducing us to legal information design, which is a very fast growing area I'm very involved with, trying to make contracts and uh, Chiara is involved as well. Um, and, and other legal documents uh, clear using visualization and simplification. So there's two really good talks to come and there's others uh, we're organizing throughout the year. So it's the essentially the first Thursday of every month. Just that this month, it was too close to New Year's Day uh, for that. So uh, hope to see you all in February. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks, Rodrigo. Um, Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> thanks, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone, and, and keep in touch. Thanks, bye bye. Guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.